One of the most important fundamental problems in biochemistry is the so-called protein folding problem. How a bunch of non-covalent interactions of relatively little individual energetic consequence cause the folding, the complex, reproducible, and dynamic folding uh, of, of these proteins, which can have hundreds uh, of amino acids. And so our lab tries to study that, that, that problem. And I would argue that ideally, protein folding problems uh, would benefit from the ability to essentially make movies of those proteins. And that an ideal protein folding experiment would be one in which you could track the motions of the amino acids uh, in real time as that protein folds. And so uh, essentially what one would like to do is to have a sort of a CGI movie in which one labels the amino acids in some ways and tracks the motions of those labels. So in the same way that a CGI movie is created by putting labels on a person and having the camera track the positions of those labels and use those labels to reproduce the motion of the person. In this case, the fact that he's touching his head, we would like to do that with proteins. And so there are some problems with this analogy because you can't track the motion of hundreds of labels simultaneously the way you can in CGI movies. And so what you have to do is make a bunch of measurements of pairs of probes and to try to take those measurements and reconstruct the fact that the protein is moving or that the man is touching his head. And so by analogy to the CGI movie, what I'd like to propose is that the best way of doing this would be to reduce the size of probes so that you could get a lot of information. And so as a demonstration, what I, what I show you is suppose you labeled your protein in two places with some relatively large probes then it's very difficult to, from the motions of these two green sticky notes alone, to reconstruct the fact that I'm closing my hand like this. But if you could label the protein in more places with smaller probes, then you could get a much better impression of the motion of my hand. So by tracking all of these pink probes, or by doing a series of experiments which are tracked two at a time, you could reconstruct the fact that I'm moving my hand like this. And so this is what we've tried to do in my lab. And the way we've tried to do it is by reducing the probe to essentially a single atom substitution. So taking the oxygen that's present in every amide backbone in the protein and replacing one of those with a thioamide. And this oxygen to sulfur substitution changes the optical and redox properties of that amide bond sufficiently that it can be a fluorescence quencher. And if this fluorescence quenching has a distance-dependent interaction, then we can essentially use it as a molecular ruler for the distance between that thioamide and some fluorophore. And so we can put this thioamide in at a lot of locations. And in some of those, those locations, it will have a large movement relative to the fluorophore, and we'll see a large change in fluorescence. At other locations, it won't move very much at all relative to the fluorophore, and we'll have a small change in fluorescence. And by doing this at a lot of positions, just as the pink sticky notes were on my fingers, we can reconstruct from all those different measurements how the protein was moving and hopefully achieve something like a CGI movie for proteins. So I'm James Peterson at the University of Pennsylvania, and that's what our research group does. Essentially, we try to make CGI movies of proteins.